Jess Dowderick, who is in Sarasota, looking at some of the damages this morning at 513. Jess, how's it looking out there? Well, Jacqueline, we might not have received a Category 4 hurricane like originally expected, but the damage is still severe out here this morning. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but behind me, this large tree has uprooted. I'm just around the corner from the station. We didn't have to go far to find the damage. This is a large tree completely uprooted. It has fallen onto Orange Street, um, luckily missing the home that it sits in the front yard of. Also, as we're out here, we are seeing power lines continue to spark along Orange Street, and I'm sure that's the case in many parts of the Sun Coast um, this morning. So again, county officials are asking you guys to stay where you are for breakfast, whether that be the shelter or your home. Do not try to go back to your home if that's not where you are um, this morning to assess damage until first responders are able to, to get out here on the roads and take care of issues like these downed trees, like downed power lines. Um, they don't want you risking your safety this morning. They know you're anxious to see, you know, what damage was done to your property and your home, but they're just asking that you stay where you are through breakfast. So the rain, I mean, as you can see, the rain is still coming down very steadily this morning. The wind doesn't really seem to be much of an issue at this point in time. It's still a little bit breezy, um, but nothing too severe like we were seeing yesterday. Now, when we first pulled out of our station, um, there are also traffic lights that are out this morning. So obviously that will be a safety hazard if people are on the roads too early. And like um, meteorologist Bob Harrigan, I heard him saying just before this, wind gusts are still in the 60s and the 50 miles an hour. And just as a reminder, um, first responders are not out responding to these downed power lines and downed trees until those winds go down to less than 45 miles an hour. So obviously they will be out here as soon as they can responding to these things, um, getting the trees out of the way, making sure the power lines are secure and safe, um, not sparking or hanging in the roadways. Obviously, if you see any of that, call and report it and also just stay away from it and stay inside until first responders are able to be out here. It's safe for them to be out here and they can respond to things like that. So again, we're seeing sparking power lines this morning, large trees uprooted, and this is just a little bit of the damage. Again, we just had to go around the corner from our station to find this. Uh, I can't imagine what the rest of the Sun Coast looks like this morning. So of course, um, anything you're willing to share with us on our Facebook page, on our Twitter page, email us. Um, we'd love to see you know what, what the wrath of Irma had on you and your property. Hopefully everyone is safe this morning. Um, but again, you're just asked to have breakfast where you are this morning. If that's the shelter, stay there until first responders are able to get out here um, and take care of the issues that we're seeing. So uh, power lines still down, sparking power lines, traffic lights are out, um, uprooted trees, branches in the middle of the roadways. So everyone stay where you are for now and stay safe. Jacqueline. Happy to see happen. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, John. Let's go out to the 10th Street Boat Ranch. Jess Dodrick has moved over there for an update on the scene from the, uh, the water's edge. Good morning, Jess. Good morning, Ray and Jacqueline. As you can see behind me, the storm may be past, but the waves continue to crash up against the seawall here at the 10th Street Boat Ramp. Uh, water has been flying through the air all morning. The parking lot here at the Van Wazel and at the boat ramp is starting to flood. Um, we, we saw earlier before the storm how the water was being dr drugged back into um, the Gulf, and now it's the complete opposite. Water crashing along the shorelines, and you can see a bright light just across the way from where we are right now. That's actually the GMA crew. Good Morning America is going to be going live here in just a few minutes from the same boat ramp that we are at at this point in time. Um, we've been driving around the streets this morning. A lot of trees that are down. Um, we've seen transformers blow. Um, the power lines continue to spark, so definitely still dangerous conditions this morning. Although the storm might have passed, um, you know, the remnants of it are still here. Very rough waters. Um, you can see the water just continue to crash up over the seawall. And actually, it's a lot better now than what it was a little earlier um, this morning. The, the wind has calmed down slightly. Um, I'm sure we'll still get those major gusts of wind. Um, of course, the wind speed still pretty strong this morning. Bob Harrigan was saying um, about 50 mile an hour gusts still. So of course, first responders still not able to go out to respond to situations. There have been fire alarms that have been going off in downtown Sarasota. There have been 
um, a cross falling off a local church. Um, it, right now it's hard to keep the hat on your head. So um, the wind picking up, just as I say, it, it wasn't um, very strong anymore. Um, so the gust coming, you can see the waves continuing um, to crash here. So obviously stay where you are, stay in your shelter or where, wherever you evacuated to until first responders say it is safe to come out. There are traffic lights not working um, down power lines. So stay where you are, have breakfast there. Don't rush back um, because it's all, of course the most important thing is your safety station about at this point in time. And we've seen large trees in the middle of roadways. We've seen um, power lines sparking. I don't know if you can hear it, if it, the audio is picking it up, but there's a fire alarm that consistently keeps going off um, somewhere here in downtown Sarasota. Um, not sure if the winds are calm enough yet for first responders to be responding to things like that, but I'm going to take you down the sidewalk a little bit to kind of show you um, some of the downed um, pieces of palm trees and branches and things um, here on Main Street. So nothing um, too crazy to look at at this point in time, but this is just kind of a glimpse glimpse into um, what they're seeing, what we're seeing across the Sun Coast at this time. So a little bit ago, we were on um, Orange, just a little south of 10th Street, where a large tree has fallen into the roadway. Um, we did see one SPD cruiser who was driving around with his flashers on, um, not his flashers, his sirens, um, not sure where he was going or what he was responding to. So it appears that some first responders may be out at this point in time, um, but maybe not all of them. So you're being asked this morning to stay in your shelter or stay wherever you went to evacuate and eat breakfast there. They're asking you to have breakfast in place so first responders can get out here in Sarasota and Manatee counties and clean up the mess that Hurricane Irma left behind. So there again, um, power lines that are still sparking, downed power lines, trees in the roads. There are traffic lights that are still out at this point in time as the hurricane continues um, to move north and move out of our area. So um, just be patient. I know you guys want to get back to your homes to kind of see, you know, what uh, Hurricane Irma left behind, but just be a little bit patient. Wait a couple of hours and let first responders get out here um, and clean up everything that's going wrong at this point. Jacqueline. All right, thank you so much, Jess. We are joined now by Ray Conrick is out there with a look at what conditions are like. Jess, how's it looking out there? Well, Jacqueline, things are slowly um, but surely starting to get a little worse and worse as we continue to drive around this morning. So right now I'm on Bradenton Beach. Um, you can see the sand behind me. The waves, um, from what I can see, I haven't walked down to the water because obviously it's, it's dark down there. Um, the waves seem to be rolling in um, as normal, but the winds are starting to pick up here. Um, we were out near Manatee River. Now we're here on the beach, and the winds are a little stronger here, obviously near any of the, the bodies of water water that we've been at than they are in the inland. So I'm not sure if you can see um, it's pretty calm right now. There have been gusts of wind, but you can see some of the the weeds blowing in the background um, and it is starting to rain. Um, it has been raining kind of on and off for the last couple of hours. It's probably it's not very steady right now, but it's probably the steadiest it's been since we've been out, um, you know, early earlier this morning and late last night um, we were driving along um, Anna Maria Island here at Bradenton Beach and it's pretty much a ghost town um, like EMS had said earlier this evening not very many people I think I've seen one truck that was parked no one on the roads um, it's kind of an eerie feeling out here um, tonight so again a live look at Bradenton Beach um, you know, obviously these beaches are closed along with everything else. When we were coming across the Cortez Bridge, you know, I had to check in with law enforcement because they are still checking IDs as people come on and off the island. So um, they were asking for two forms of identification when people come on the island. Um, when I asked if we could, you know, come out here to give you guys a live look at what's going on, um, they told me that we could at our own risk. Um, so people as they leave the islands, of course, do not need to show any forms of ID. You can just leave. But if you're trying to make your way back on the island, they are asking for two forms of identification, one that at least has your address on it. So they're only letting people on the barrier islands who live here, um, obviously to protect the homes because a lot of people have evacuated and the valuables that they have inside. Um, so one last live look at Bradenton Beach here. The waves still seem to be pretty calm. The wind is coming in gusts. It gusts it picks up at times um, and the rain is steadily coming down that we this storm approaches and we are going to actually go live to Erica Jackson who is at Siesta Key at the entrance of the North Bridge Erica what are conditions looking like out there this morning 
Good morning, Jacqueline. Right now, it looks like it's uh, the wind is blowing a lot heavier than it was just about an hour ago when we got here, and it's starting to come down heavier than we got here about an hour ago. And as you can see behind me, there is a car from the Sarasota Police Office and also a car from the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office, and they are stopping drivers from getting onto the key. And the reason is just to keep you safe. If you are a resident of the key, you can get on, but make sure you have a form of identification, just showing your address. That could be a license, passport, any sort of utility bill, just something that has a proof of address so they can let you on safely. I was told there's been about a dozen people that have been trying to get on to the key. There's been some good and bad examples of those trying and those of being able to get on one of those um, the police department was telling me that there was a man and he left his laptop after evacuating so they did let him back onto the key but there were a couple people that were trying to get back on or just get on for the first time so they could see the beach and the waves going they also apparently there was a rumor about a pizza place being open earlier this evening and those people were not allowed onto the key because they're not residents but just take note if you are a resident on the key and you want to leave you can leave at any time and this is all for your safety so just a reminder if you are a resident of the key and you want to get back on all you have to do is have a form of identification with you so you can get back on and uh, just if you aren't a resident of the key then um, they are going to turn you away they're going to ask you to turn around and this is the same also for the south bridge this is the north bridge right here and uh, we'll bring you seem kind of relieved to, to have found a place that yeah they, they did and they yeah. seemed like they were pretty prepared that they had gotten their house uh, in order and what they needed to do and brought with them what they wanted and their valuables are yeah. safe Let's get back out to another one of our reporters tonight, ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick. She's been all over the place on the Sun Coast tonight. Where are you now, Jess? Surprise! I'm, you never know where I'm going to show up tonight, Scott and Jacqueline. Well, now I'm at Manatee Memorial Hospital. Um, they did close earlier this evening. They did evacuate um, starting at 7 o'clock this evening. So there were 206 patients here when they decided to evacuate. They were all moved to Lakewood Ranch Medical Center. So there were also 10 NICU babies here um, at the time of evacuation. Also, they were taken to other hospitals in the area. Now, Blake... Medic Blake, um, sorry, I lost my spot here. Blake Memorial, I believe it's called. Blake Hospital. It is still open um, tonight, and Manatee County EMS is transferring all of its calls and sending all of its patients to other area hospitals. Um, the emergency room is no longer open here. When we tried to just drive into the parking lot um, to park to, to bring you this latest information here, um, they're all blocked off. The, there are some lights still on inside of the hospital, um, but again, they are all evacuated here tonight. Back to you, Scott and Jacqueline. Yeah, right along the Manatee River there is, is why that hospital had to be evacuated. Exactly. All right, Jess.